Good morning, everybody. It's Javier, and I'm super excited to come with you here today with another tool that can help you dramatically increase your mortgage business because so many uh, of you are also realtors. It'll help you on that side as well. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'm excited to report is that more and more of the markets that we work in are reopening. And so our biggest markets uh, this past week, I was actually in the, with two different police departments uh, with one school. And so, you know, a lot of the places that we get our business from uh, are reopening slowly but surely, at least here in California and most other states, they've already been reopened. But uh, it's also important to know that one of our best markets by far is what I'm going to talk to you about here today and give you the actual domain to the tool you're going to see here at the end, which is, of course, churches. You know, Churches are by far a place that has been very good to us for many, many years. Unfortunately, we have a lot of churches that are hurting and some have even gone out of business. I was driving by this beautiful church and I'm talking about not your storefront church, but your actual standalone church. And I had to make a U-turn because I didn't, I didn't think I saw it correctly. Beautiful church, steeple, the whole nine yards. And uh, to make a long story longer, when I went back to look at it, it, it was out of business. They were completely uh, shuttered, if you would. And a lot of churches are either hurting and, and, or in danger of going out of business and looking for funds. So that's what we're going to talk about here today, which is going to be on the great tool that I have been using time and time again with churches. Uh, usually I take about one Sunday a month to go do a church campaign presentation because, of course, I do my own thing. But uh, about once a month, we book quite a bit out into the future. And so having said that, let me just go ahead and fire this up so we can get going. And what we're going to talk about today is going to be how to leverage the church flip chart for mortgages and for real estate and so on, and to show you how to leverage the power of this as well. So bear with me while I kind of start from the beginning. <clears throat> now, this, this, you know, does require, oh, you know, before I forget, before I go any further, let me go ahead and just mute everybody so we don't have to worry about the background noise in the middle of the presentation itself. If you have a question, if you have any kind of comment, by all means, unmute yourself. And you know how to do it, obviously, on your screen. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that. Oh, we got more people coming in. Hold on. All right. Well, hopefully, like I said, everybody that's here. Okay. Let's just keep going. And so, like I said, super excited. This presentation is intended to help you generate more mortgage business and even a real estate company. It's amazing how much real estate business it helps you generate as well. It's a very good month. I think we fell short, just short of the $100 uh, in fundings here at HMAC or Radio Mortgage Bank. So we really want to get ourselves over the 100 million in production per month. What has happened, just so you know, and I'm going to give you the update because Rhett's not going to do his second half of the webinar today. He's unavailable. Is that rates are starting to inch up forward. And as they go up, it, it precludes a lot of people from either A, qualifying for a refinance, or in some cases, it's bumping people out of the ability to buy a home. And so, like I said, rates are starting to go up a little bit. So you want to definitely get a move on it. And our goal is to leverage some of the campaigns that we leveraged so well before to get us back over 100 million. And so this week I was with uh, two police stations. I was at one school and I spoke with a few. I, I didn't visit them, but I spoke with a few people from the church campaign that are interested in us helping them raise much, much needed funds. Uh, usually we talk about raising money for things such as a stove or something that makes the church money or whatever the case might be. But right now, a lot of them are trying to catch up on their rents and trying to not close. And so again, either they want to just go ahead and fill up their coffers because they had to deplete them during the pandemic, or they just want to simply complete their good deeds, which we're going to talk about here in just one second as well. Uh, what you see here is a flip chart. It looks like a PowerPoint, and I am working it off a of PowerPoint so we can be a lot smoother, but I'm going to show you how to get to the actual online flip chart. And flip charts are wonderful. We've used these as a way of us being able to spread whatever message we need to spread in a consistent fashion. Instead of you having to memorize all this information, all you have to do is learn how to work a flip chart, which is thankfully pretty, pretty simple, uh, especially once I'm done showing you here in just one second as well. So this is the presentation and we give this presentation usually, or we send it to the actual decision makers, whether it be the priest or whether it be the pastor, or whether it be the rabbi, whoever the uh, person in charge is, is who we present this to. Now, I have presented to people that are either decision makers, influencers, or just members of the church that can get us to the right person. Because let me tell you something, every single church out there, I don't care what part of the country or the world, 
We get requests from all over the world as far as Africa to do the fundraisers, except the commute's a little long to Africa or any other country. So we just do it within the USA right now. And this is the actual presentation that serves both as a presentation and also as a script. So you can be a brand new person today and go ahead and just read what's on the actual slide, if you would, without having to memorize a thing. And so it is true. Fundraising is a crucial component that enables churches to carry out their important and noble missions. Worldwide missions to spread the gospel or helping children across the globe, maybe helping the less fortunate here at home, or simply maintaining and improving you know, your own church, which is what every church wants to be able to do. And that can include paint, that can include new sound equipment, that can include a new kids room. Uh, obviously, the common denominator among all these noble uh, deeds here is that they require funding, which unfortunately too often is in short supply, especially in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Most of the money that churches raise are, are raised during service uh, Sunday service, which they haven't had in some places almost a year now, or even if they are open again, they're still in the uh, they're still in a position where they could use or definitely definitely need more income right now to catch up with all their bills. So it's definitely in short supply. And this is where we come in. What we do is that what we have done over the years is we have re literally raised tens of thousands, which is not hundreds of thousands. That's why this presentation is being updated. Just so you know, uh, to, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for churches all across the USA. And we've got the pictures to prove it, of course. Uh, this is Alan, one of our great uh, agents with us as well. Myself, I don't care what kind of church, I don't care where it's located, as long as we are, or one of our agents is within driving distance, we're there. And it's amazing what an extra 500, 1,000, 3,000, 8,000 dollars will do for a church. And of course, this is just a few of the things that we have done and continue to do especially here in California as churches are starting to reopen. I'm not going to get into the political element, but there was a legal challenge that won. And now churches are reopening, not just to save souls, if you would, but also to save themselves from going out of business because a church can only operate without proper funding for so long. And so again, no matter where it is, well, we are there as long as they are willing to do their part. I will tell you that the way this church campaign works the best is when you run it, as advertised. If you start to modify it, if you start to change it, if you start to deviate, that's when that's where you're going to get in trouble. It's super, super simple. The way we explain it to a, a pastor, let's say, or, or a rabbi or a decision maker is the same way we're going to explain it to you. And it's written in the brochure. This is an ebook you're going to get access to here at the end. Our system is simple. Now remember, this is the actual ebook that you're going or flip chart. You're going to be showing somebody on your phone, your tablet, or laptop, and this is the script. So if nothing else, just read it. That's all you got to do. Read it, and you'll be absolutely fine. First of all, we identify a specific goal for your church and set a financial target to raise. For example, uh, maybe your church needs to raise five hundred dollars for a new range, a stove, or refrigerator, or any other type of goal. Well, we set a date for fu uh, your fundraising event during Sunday service. And this is something, guys, that you and gals, you need to understand. We don't deviate from. We don't come back on a Tuesday or Thursday. We do this only during Sunday service. If somebody says, no, you can't come in during Sunday service, well, then thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. You can give me my money back. I'm out of here. Now, just so you know, we've never had somebody say no to Sunday service because they understand that as a fundraising element, the greater the audience, the more success we're going to have. And that's precisely what you want to do. On the day of the fundraiser, we conduct a 10-minute Why Homeownership Matters workshop, which is literally 10 minutes. And it talks about the importance. Now, there's a lot of different reasons. And I'm not going to quiz you. What, what the hell? Let's, let, let me quiz you right now. What are so, Why does homeownership matter? And why would it matter, let's just say, to a church? What the hell do they care about how many homeowners or renters they have? Anybody? Give me some compelling reasons. If I'm the pastor and you're trying to come to my church to you know, sell me on this and you tell me that your presentation that's titled White Homeownership Matters, I'm asking you, well, what the hell does homeownership have to do with my church? Why does homeownership matter? Anyone? Just hurry up. It's, it's, it stabilizes um, the, um, the congregation. Okay. So so, okay. Just one. Just one. Bullet points. Bullet points. Okay. Bullet points. Stabilizes the congregation. What else? Anybody? Somebody different? Because I'm telling you right now, if you can't give a reason, you think somebody else is going to believe you? Because if you don't believe it, they're not going to believe you. 
And so you better have the magic word is compelling, compelling reasons. So why does homeownership matter? Especially if I'm a pastor, I'm listening to you. Well, it allows, it allows homeowners to put down roots, create a stable environment, help build their community and church. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. What else? Anybody? Taxes. Okay. Taxes. Okay. And remember what we want to do as marketers, we always want to customize the answer so that it's sweet music to the ears of the person hearing, which is true. I mean, they want church members to be better off. That's true. But what else? I mean, I want compelling reasons. I mean, that is compelling taxes, by the way, because everybody hates taxes. What else? Guys, I know I don't have, uh, maybe I do have to remind you, you are loan originators. Remember that? <laughs> and then some of you even have the audacity to be real estate agents. Maybe you shouldn't. Um, you're not doing a hell of a job of convincing yourself, number one, let alone me, uh, that I should let you in. Because I, I mean, so far, every answer has been very, very good, but there's a lot of people on this webinar, and this sucks, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm just being very honest with you. Because I guarantee you, if I ask you, what's your first name? Anybody, what's your first name? Anybody? Oh, you know your first name either. Okay. This is not good because an ML, MLO license, I think it sucks, to be honest with you. I've been working in mortgages since we had the W-2 program. You filled out one W-2 with your name, you signed it, and you were blessed and officially approved to do mortgages to represent the bank that allowed you to sign the W-2. No MLS, no license, nothing. And now you got to go through all these hoops and pay all kinds of money to get a license that if you don't know what the hell to do with it, it's just an expensive, expensive luxury to have. And that's it's why, also, it's not, huh? It's also a way to build wealth, wealth for the kids. Okay. Get, I remember, okay, it's going to build, build wealth for the kids. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of you here. I think one of the best things about home ownership is that you lock in today's prices for the next 30 years. Like okay. an example, and my parents have a four bedroom house and they only pay a $700 mortgage payment. I mean, rent would be at least double that in the area where I am. Perfect. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Now, my only recommendation to, uh, to you is that keep that, keep that story. Here's what I, what I do. Anybody that knows me for more than 10 minutes, know I have nothing to hide. I have my wife probably hates that, but I have nothing to hide where it, I'll tell you everything from my mortgage payment to this. Uh, I don't care about anything because I think people, you owe it to people and people know when you're, when you're blowing smoke versus when you're being honest. So if I'm telling you that absolutely uh, just where I'm at, I mean, I live in Southern California, the most expensive you know zones in the damn country. And you're absolutely right. I pay, I think, two thousand or twenty-two hundred dollars for the mortgage of principal and interest because I'm paying it down and I refi that, refi it, and everything else. But you cannot find my daughter just moved into a rental right now for twenty-two fifty for a rental, twenty-two fifty. And here you have a house, so that's a huge deal. What else? Anybody? Great, great point. Come on, guys. You guys are not doing a very good job of convincing me uh, as a pastor. Why the hell I should let you in? And well, Tony, you're, not, you're not even going to approach me to ask because you lack the confidence. Come on. Well, kid, kids of homeowners tend to stay in school longer and do better in school. In the That's long a run. big deal because if you have kids, parents want to help their kids do better. And if it's something that I can do that I'm going to do anyways, pay rent or pay a mortgage. And now you're telling me that kids in schools do much, uh, the homeowners do better. And why do they do so much better? By the way, that is true. Kids of homeowners do better in school. But why? One big reason. Because they do have to move around. They don't have to move around. Stability. I mean, the yep. stability in anything in the home, in a home, you know, in any home is important in a home type of setting. So they'd be, of course, they're going to do that. What else? So that's a big one right there. If they have kids, or if I'm talking to somebody who knows, so in the congregation, of course, they're going to be kids. So if I tell them that, you know, kids do much better in school because they belong to that school a hell of a lot longer when they own a home. That's true. What else? Uh, yeah, homeowners, yeah, yeah. homeowners tend to volunteer more, contribute to the community more, create. Okay, well, let's leave it at that more. because now you're almost you're almost to one of the most important elements that is being missed. Let's just leave it at that, Steve. And you're absolutely right. They do volunteer more. They do. All, you're 100 right. What else? Somebody else? Come on. When you have your house, you can do anything you want to. You can pin any call you want. Okay, that's pretty cool. When you can go to and not have to check with the landlord. Uh, can I paint the house purple? Or can I, you know, install this right now? One of the biggest uh, things it was it took a legal fight, uh, and I do mean a legal fight. And that the only reason this fight was won by the consumer was because of the companies. And that is when the, I don't know if you guys remember when satellite dishes started to be the big thing way back in the day. Well, people that were renting were not allowed to put it up because the homeowners didn't want that ugly dish. Then they didn't sue 
who sued was the actual companies, uh, direct TVs, if you would, and they won, saying that if you are a renter, you can put an ugly dish up there as long as you bring it down. And so therefore nobody could be denied it. But that's because of the financial interest in it. So yeah, you can do, you can customize a home, do whatever the hell you want to do with it. But we're missing some key ones. Come on. Uh, finances. What about finances? Yeah, homeowners, you know, people that own homes, they're probably more able to pay their, you know, their church tithe, tithe instead of uh, someone who's renting. You know, okay. So they... And how do we summarize that? How do we, how do we encapsulate that? Because remember, what we want to do is when I'm talking to somebody, to a pastor or whoever, I want to be able to tell them literally maybe 20 to 30 sentences as part of my conversation. And then I get to the bullet points. And if I talk to somebody and I simply say, look, Mr. or Mrs. Pastor, one of the things that's so important about homeownership and part of the reason, part of the reason that I am so passionate about helping become uh, people become homeowners is that homeowners have a greater amount of wealth. And when they have mm -hmm. more, they can give more, mm -hmm. especially to the church. Yeah. The churches are full of people who would, if they had, give more. Uh, that doesn't pay the bills, okay? Uh, we, we don't yeah. need that. We want people that actually want to give and can give. So that's a huge point. Guys, so far, uh, if I had to give you a great, just because of the people that have helped you out, you get a D plus. Uh, we really got to move it up a little bit more than that. You're not in a position to go out there and succeed as a loan officer if this is the best you've got. I'll tell you that right now. And I'm just being honest with you. I'm not impressed. Why? Come on, give me some more. I mean, just so you know, this has to direct, this is, there's a direct correlation with what you're telling. First of all, who's the most important person you have to convince that homeownership matters? Who is it? A mother, a wife. Mm -hmm. Almost, almost. That's true. That's true. But there's one person that's even more important. Because then with the money. Okay, that's oh, almost. I mean, you're you're probably. And the answer is the number one person you have to convince that homeownership matters is you, yourself. Uh -huh. Because how you feel, you, the loan officer, the realtor, how you feel, is what we transfer to people. Uh, okay. And so mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Most. Let me just stop this for a second because, okay, uh, you have to understand one thing that most loan officers and most real estate agents don't make it because they have something called commission breath. Does that make sense? Commission mm -hmm. breath. That you're talking to me and all I can smell is your desire to make a dollar off of me. Yeah. That's why when a realtor comes to my door, I slam the door in their face. You know what I mean? Because they think they don't want to help me. But when you start speaking their language and when you come across with the trust, especially the endorsement of a priest, or a rabbi or a pastor, and they say, hey, today we have a special guest. It's Javier, who's so passionate about helping people become homeowners that we had to have him here today. And by the way, he's going to help us raise funds. I know we've been trying to buy that new stove that you all know we sell food here at the end of our service. Well, we haven't been able to sell it in the last two months because we need a new range. I mean, it's too expensive. It's $2,000. And he's going to help us raise funds today. So let's give him a round of applause and let's bring him up here. And you don't even need a PowerPoint. Give me a microphone. Just give me the microphone and give me an audience and I'll move them to the point that they're going to want. Now, will they qualify for a home? That doesn't matter. Do the people you talk to all qualify for a home? Are they all ready to buy a home? They all, they all have the credit, their funds. No, this game is a numbers game. And the person with the most prospects will always win. The person with the most prospects will always make the most money because a lot will not, but some will. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. And we do that to the tune of, of this month. We fell a little short of $100 million a month. And so I want to help all of you do the same thing. It's not fun when somebody else is making all the money, closing all the deals or the loans. But if you're not ready for it, work on yourself. Don't go looking for answers externally when the answer really is internal. And that's you. It's how you feel. So, so, so far, like five of you have convinced me why I should buy a home. The rest of you just let me be a, stay a renter. And you definitely need to work on more of that as well. So let me go back to this right here. And hopefully we can get through this without me getting a heart attack. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and do this. There we go. And so, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of compelling reasons. One of the most important thing that I always ask myself that you need to ask yourself is, is what you're telling me, is it compelling? Meaning if I'm the decision maker at the church and, and I hear this, whatever you have to say, does that compel me to say, Okay, I want to go ahead and get this done right now. Or is it something like, oh, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. Okay, bye. I mean, that kind of a thing. I, I went to speak to a pastor, uh, it was a while back, like six months ago, 
And we were look, we were doing the presentation. It's actually one of the pictures on the brochure, and it was a beautiful event. Mm-hmm. And when I was with him, he goes, Okay, well, let me look at the calendar. I have to run it by the board. I have to do this, I have to do that. So hopefully we can do it in you know in a in a couple of weeks. And I was like, wonderful, but just so you know, we only have one spot a month. This month is taken, and two months from now is taken. And he stopped and he looked at me, he goes, You know what? What the hell? Put me down for next month. I'll be the one for next month. All right, thank you. and done. No board, no nothing. Because the sense of loss was a lot greater than whatever things he had to go through to explain why he has a date to the to the board. Very simple. Very simple. So the word, the magic word is compel. You can compel people. Uh, we, I did our police uh, roll call presentation. Same thing. COVID, we're closed. Sorry, we're closed because of COVID. And I said, okay, well, we were actually going to do a fundraiser at the end of it. But I understand. Maybe we'll try next year. And they said, what fundraiser? And I go, no, we have a way of doing a fundraiser for your actual police uh, department. And they're like, okay, we'll tell you what, how's next Thursday? I go, well, as long as we have the biggest roll call, we want to come in and make sure that because we, we're going to raise money for you. We need the biggest audience. Well, well actually, Wednesdays are maximum deployment day. Perfect, Wednesday. And that thing ended up making us like $24,000 out of one roll call. One roll call. All because she thought she was going to be in control of the conversation. And hell no. I'll let her feel like she's in control. She's the cop. I don't care. And I know she's the sergeant. And I know she's the decision maker. But I'm in charge. And the best part, she never knew it. So that's what you want to do. If you haven't read and if you haven't read or taken the course Mastering Influence by Tony Robbins, which we do here every couple of months free, and we give you the workbook free, man, you better, better learn how to master influence. There's nothing more powerful than having people feel they're in control. But in reality, you're in control. You can't give up control as a loan officer, as a real estate agent. And that's why 95% of the realtors cannot sustain themselves as just real estate agents or even loan officers. 95. People argue with me all the time. Oh, no, no, it's more like 80%. I uh, cannot only, uh, you know, 20% can do it. I go, 5% do it. Because even with that number you're going by, they're subsidized by their spouse by their by something else, which is fine. I'm not bad mouthing it. I'm in that same book. And so for, for me, I'm in that boat with you. So for me, I want to be part of the 5% that, that, that I'm able to sustain myself. So I'm not bragging. I'm saying that I'm fearful of slipping into that. So it keeps you on your toes. You better stay on your toes in this business and stay humble, but you better stay hungry too. And you better be doing what needs to be done. So anyways, well, on the day of the fundraiser, we conduct the 10 minute why homeownership matters workshop and then emphasize it emphasizes reasons to own a home and for you that didn't answer you better take notes here uh it emphasizes that homeowners belong to churches longer than renters and nobody knows that better than a pastor a priest a church leader they know their membership comes and goes that's where they're always recruiting but at the more homeowners that they have they belong to that church a hell of a lot longer Homeowners have stable housing costs versus renters. You know, people have it backwards. And when I'm talking to a pastor, a priest, or a decision maker, a leader, and I'm telling them, you know, a lot of the times people ha- people have it wrong. They think the church is here to help them with their finances when it should be the other way around. And why is that? A lot of it has to do with little to no formal education as to how many works. They've never taken so much as a course, a seminar, let alone an actual class. Homeowners build more wealth than renters. Renters build wealth, but for their landlords. Whereas homeowners, on the other hand, are building wealth for themselves and their families. Intergenerational wealth is where it's at. Also, children of homeowners do better in school than renters because they're stable. Same teachers. I mean, I'm, I'm a product of that. I moved around a lot when I was a kid. You know, my mom's a single mom and and I was from one school to the other. I went to like four or five different elementary schools. I mean, you know, you never get the full swing of things until you actually stay somewhere long enough and they see it and they know it. And a whole lot more reasons, like I said, that I'm not going to get into because this is just a short PowerPoint. And then we show pictures. We're not saying that we want to be able to do this. We are actually doing this, showing people how to build wealth for themselves, their families and their church. We then transition to the fundraising element. Once we're done with our Why Homeownership Matters presentation, which is very short, I, I take three minutes, by the way, because there are those people that want to become 
homeowners and there are those that don't care. And I don't care about those too much. I want to work with these, the small group of people that really, if they could, or they knew how, my record is three years that I work with somebody for three years from the day they raised their hand and they filled out the form saying, I want to be a homeowner until they were ready to actually close the deal. It's because three years, because the credit was an issue, the, the, uh, the, the down payment was an issue, this was an issue, three years. And my thing to everybody is that I don't care how long it takes. Hopefully it doesn't take three years. But if you're serious about giving your children a better life as, as a homeowner, and I'll show you how it is a much better life, not just the stability, but everything that comes with it. If you're willing to wait it out, I'll wait it out with you. If you want it done tomorrow, I'm not your guy. That's just how simple it is. We state the reason for the fundraiser, and then we set the financial goal, the dollar amount. So we ask everybody to donate 50 bucks. Perfect example would be a nice round number. Everybody that rates, uh, each person that blesses the church with a donation, we bless them with a vacation stay in a resort of their choice. Now, by a show of hands, I'm asking you guys now on this webinar, how many of you could use a vacation getaway right now after this past year? Anybody? One? Only one person? I, yep. Two? I do. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I just came back from Kabul, and next Sunday we leave for Maui because I need another I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> Go to Vegas. I mean, I, that's, that's the point of it. Go to San Diego. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Got to get out. Life is, I, I will tell you two things about life, okay? Life is short and life is fragile. And waiting for the ideal time for anything can literally never come. And so for me, you know, this year, like I said, we just came back from Cabo. We were in uh, Salt Lake City. Oh, not Salt Lake, but Park City, Utah. We're going to Hawaii this one. We have a trip to Dubai. We have a trip to uh, Abu Dhabi. And uh, we have a trip somewhere in Europe. I forget where the hell we're going in Europe. But anyways, uh, but the point is, you won't catch me here a lot. Because I'm here to make money, to live life, enjoy life, share life with my loved ones. I'm not a realtor. I'm not a loan officer first. I'm a father, a husband first. Been married for almost 30 years. And I, was, I would like to make it to 40. Uh, and I know that that has a lot to do with the level of stress or how stress-free things are. And life is stressful as it is without us creating it. So the point of it is, is that here... You bless the church, which you should do anyways, by the way. I shouldn't have to give you a damn thing. This is your church, by the way. You bless your church with a donation, and we will bless you with a vacation stay in the resort of your choice. Now, just by a show of hands, how many, here, how many people here would like to take their kids or grandkids to Disney World uh, and not have to worry about the stay, which is the expensive part, by the way, of staying up there? Anybody? Uh, how many people here would like to go, if you could, to Cancun? Anybody? I mean, how many people would he like to go to Vegas? No airfare, no nothing, just drive there, four days, come back. Anybody? Uh, how many people like to go to Puerto Vallarta? Or just by a show of hands, how many people here, remember we are in a sanctuary, we're in a church, how many people here would like to go to Israel and see the Holy Land for yourself? Anybody? Raise your hand. I mean, you you don't want to go anywhere, you just want to stay home. That's cool. That's okay. As long as you go to church, you can stay home. But everybody else that raised their hand, you're going to have that chance here today. Now, if only 10 people donate 50 bucks, boom, we got the 500. But we don't do that, by the way. Usually we do 20-something people to 30-something. If here, only 20 people can donate 50 bucks, we'll hit it. So it doesn't matter how big or small the church is. We don't work with a lot of, we don't work with any mega churches, just so you know. Mega churches usually don't need you. We're talking about small to medium-sized churches. That's what we work with, small to medium-sized churches. So no, no matter how you slice it, no matter how pessimistic you might be, hitting the financial goal of the church is doable. And that's your job to show how simple it can be. Now, how many people do you average on a Sunday? And most people, most pastors, decision makers, priests, how many people do you think average a Sunday church? A small to medium-sized church, how many people? Maybe 50. 50. 50. Okay, call it 50. And, and we only, here's what I will tell you. I would never raise $25, never. And let me tell you why. Because if I start to raise $25, people start to think, this is too good to be true. This is nothing. What the hell can you get for 20 bucks? I would never do that. I would rather get less people with 50, but it will be more money for the church. So let's see how many math whizzes we have out there, because I'm not one. I hate math. Uh, uh, let's just say 40 adults, because it might be 200 people, but I'm talking about families. So call it 50. Easier math. If they each donate 500 bucks, how much money is that? $2,000. $2,000? I think so. Yeah. Okay, okay, 2000 and, and that's at just 50 with just 50, uh, $50. That's 
That's 2000. So, so what did we miss? And instead of the whole, you, you know, uh, numbers, we hit only half. That's only a thousand bucks. That's not a bad way to miss a thousand bucks. We've hit 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 in a single Sunday. Like it's nothing. Unbelievable. And so in this example, you see, and so what we're trying to do is show how big, but also how foolproof it can be. Now, Mr. Pastor, Mrs. Pastor, is it okay if we just failed and only ended up with a thousand bucks? I mean, of course it's okay. They're gonna, you're gonna be the hero for life. And here's the here's the uh, best part. Guess who decision makers, whether they're pastors or priests or whether they're the rabbi or guess who they know? Guess. Guess other who they pre- know? Other priests, other rabbis, other, other other decision makers. Every single one of these churches belongs to a group, an alliance, something. I mean, you know how many pastors? Last year was our best one ever. We had uh, one of our gentlemen on our team. We ended up doing two. Oh, I didn't do them, actually. Hold on. Oh, somebody's asking, what's the cutoff as it relates to the mega churches and uh, our target church? And I don't have a specific number, but I would say if their membership is under probably probably 300, 400, you're in a smaller church. Mega churches have thousands of them, just, you know, thousands. And it will be damn near. Imp- so if anybody hears your message, take it. We've done a mega church. We did one mega church before. That's not our market, but we'll do it. And they are sweet because there's a ton of people, but most of them have some kind of in-house fundraising element, something hardcore. And if they don't, or even if they do have it, they just want to have more. We'll, we'll work with anybody. But the reality is that the small to medium-sized churches are in every corner of every neighborhood in the U.S. I just, when I'm looking for it, I just drive down, see one, pull over and say, excuse me, who's the uh, pastor? Oh, it's Pastor So-and-so. Okay, do you know how I can get a hold of him? Because I'm interested in sponsoring a fundraiser for your church. Oh my God, hold on, let me call him right now. And I mean, you're the hero. You're not selling. The power in all of this is to lead by giving. If you lead by giving, you will never have a shortage of business people or anything else. Always lead by giving. And so anyways, We always let them know ahead of time that the recipients are responsible for their taxes, which average around 20 bucks a night and transportation. So if they want to go to Vegas, like this gentleman just said right now, go to Vegas. But just, you know, you're responsible for your gas money. Uh, If you want to go to Cancun, which is, you know, I've taken that one before. I just took Southwest uh, and I paid with my miles. So I only paid like $49 round trip because I used my, uh, my Southwest miles. But if I had paid, it was like 240 bucks round trip. And that's where people say, well, duh, of course I got to get myself there and back. Well, I'm just being upfront with you about everything. We are talking about the resort stay itself. Now, there's no timeshare presentation involved, zero. So what does that mean? That means that you're no, you don't have to go listen to a damn presentation. You just check in and go have fun. And then when you're done, check out and go home. That's what I do when I redeem these because I've, I've taken these myself. Now, the only difference is if you want to. And I don't know why people love to take advantage. Oh, I do know why. If you do want to go to a resort that offers a mm-hmm. type of presentation, people say, like, why would I want to go there? Because if you agree to it, they'll give you a different resort that offers that, a time share presentation, but they're only for the all-inclusives. So if you don't want to pay for your meals and alcohol or whatever, then go to an uh, all-inclusive one because the other ones that we give them are not all-inclusive. You pay as you go, which is fine. But if you really want all-inclusive, then you are required to go out timeshare. We don't market those. That's only for people that really, 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 really want to go. Uh, okay, if you want to go that, you can you can do that. Um, but other than that, we market only this. We don't even mention it in front of a church. We just simply say there's no timeshare because there, there isn't. Before, they had to call a special 800 number and redeem it. And those people would mention, would you like to go to a timeshare, blah, blah, blah. Now it's all done online. Appropriate people log in, put in their code. There's the resort, there's the deposit for taxes. They have to pay for the taxes up front. Uh, and, uh, and if there's a resort fee involved, that they have, if they choose one with the resort fee, uh, Hawaii that I know of in Cancun, when I went to the Cancun one, I paid uh, $10 a day as a resort fee. You know, you got to pay it. Uh, but other than that, everything else is, is part of this. But here's the best part. Your church gets to keep 100% of the funds raised and we pay for each and every vacation stay that is awarded. That's our deal to you. And we don't even touch the money. So we need you to designate somebody like a treasurer or somebody. We don't want to handle the money. Because when I get up there and I say, all of you that are ready for this, if, uh, to receive this, come see your treasurer, Mary, 
and go ahead and see her, give her the money because 100% of it's going to stay here with your own church. First of all, you should do this because it's your church. But if you can help your church and get a vacation for up to four people out of the way, why not? Two adults, two children, why not? And we will pay for every vacation state that is awarded itself. Just a few of the time. I mean, this is just a few. And we have a website, by the way, that people go to on YouTube uh, and they can see the testimonial videos, actual videos of people that have redeemed this mm-hmm. from their church and have gone to either, most of, the, most of them choose Cancun, but Cancun or here or there or whatever. This is powerful stuff. Powerful stuff that you can do with the family and they will thank you forever. Now we run a similar campaign with police departments throughout the USA for one reason, they trust us. We go in there and show them the power of the concepts that we believe in and whether they're sheriffs or you know police departments or whatever, we're in these very exclusive locations for the simple fact that they trust us. We can help your church reach much needed funds to carry out your noble missions as well. Fundraising dates are extremely mid- limited because this is not our, our livelihood. I mean, we're just here to give to you. So reserve your fundraising date today. Uh, we do about one a month, one every, one every two months. So I would you know, suggest mm-hmm. you start to select a date and promote the event. Let your people know, hey, we got a special event coming up on this date. We have guests that are coming in to help us with the fundraising. As you know, we're trying to add another room to the church. We're trying to redo the church. We're trying to buy a new stove, a new refrigerator. Uh, and they're going to help us raise the money, but I can't get into it. All I'm telling you is you don't want to miss it, especially when they have that. And that's basically it at that point. And so anyways, if you want to go ahead and use this, I would don't, first of all, I don't email it to anybody because that defies the purpose. This is something that has to live on your mobile device as a, as a favorite, if you would, because when we update this, like we're going to update, we're actually updating it as we speak. You don't need to change anything because the updated one is one that's live online. And so the way you do it is you simply go to rmbflipchart.com from your cell phone or, or tablet or laptop. Just save the domain. Don't save the file. You can't save the file. Don't ask me for the file because I'm not going to give it to you because people say, well, what if I don't have an internet connection? Well, get one. What if I don't have this? Well, make sure it works. Every time I go into these places, before I go into the church and my appointment, I want to make sure I have a good connection. And if I don't have a good connection, guess what? Guess what churches have? This thing called Wi-Fi. And I just make sure that I get on their Wi-Fi if I need to, even though you don't need a with, uh, bandwidth. And just go from, and what's really cool, it really is a flip chart because you can slide it with your finger like a, like a regular book. Boom. If it's on your phone or tablet, you go to the next page with your finger and the page turns like this. It's really, really cool from your device. Um, from your laptop, it opens up almost like a PowerPoint. But from your phone or tablet, you literally flip it with your finger as well. And in the process, literally generate money for them. And you will never, ever have a shortage of business, especially for those of you, which are most of you that are actual realtors in the process. That way, if it ends up being a lead on the real estate side, well, guess what? You can handle it. Uh, If it ends up being a lead on the mortgage side, well, you can handle it. And and here's the best part. Uh, You can leverage the power of both incomes to help more people truly become homeowners. That's We just had a police officer right now. Uh, It was a $890,000 home and it almost didn't happen because he was short $10,000, but because we were handling both sides of the transaction, it's unbelievable how much money, oh, you can do the math on a, uh, you know, eight, $900,000 home. And we handled the real estate and on the mortgage, we ended up helping him with $10,000 credit. Nobody else would have done it. But if not for that, the deal wouldn't close at the end. And, you know, he's our client for life, literally for life. And his brother is our client. His mother's a client. His sister is already a, a client of ours. I, I don't know the number, 50,000, 60,000 in commissions minimum from that group of family, all by referral. Not one penny in advertisement, nothing. And that's really where you want to get to as well. Um, comments, questions, concerns uh, at this time. Yes. Go ahead. Um, Javier, I got a few things. Number one, do you ever combine uh, the home uh, ownership stuff with the life insurance presentation? Great question. And the answer is yes. The only time I don't do it is when I, when somebody from, let's just say, Radiant sets up their own 
uh, presentation at a church, we always keep it just mortgages. And if they do real estate, they're real estate. I, I don't get involved in that. I'm, I'm just there to show them how to do it. I will do the first one uh, just to get you going. And after that, you're expected to learn, buddy. You're going to keep everything. You're going to have to uh, obviously be on your toes. But I lead personally, if it's something that I put together, I lead with financial services and incorporate the re real estate and mortgages because that's part of building wealth. And that's why we call it the wealth building workshop. So I call it a wealth building workshop, not a real estate workshop, not a mortgage workshop, not a life insurance workshop, a wealth building workshop. And that incorporates because that allows me to capture. Let me see if I can, let me see if I have it here. Hold on. I'll pull it up so I can show it to you. Hold on. Let me see if I pull this up real quick uh, to show you what I mean by how you will just simply capture more. But if I, if you're just real estate, oh, here it is. Uh, Okay, hold up. Hold up. Oh, here it is. Hold on. I'm trying to pull up the actual so you can see. Uh, so you can kind of get an example of the questionnaire that I use. All right, here we go. Here it is. So let me just show you this right here. And, okay, so this is, so here, uh, let me just make sure you can see it. One second, please. And so the reason I do that is because, again, I'm not in the mortgage business, just so you know. I don't consider myself in the real estate business. I'm in the marketing business. I don't give a crap where I get paid from, to be honest with you. Um, I, I don't care. Every, every single week, from multiple different, oh, here it is. And so hopefully you can see it now, but this is a, it don't, jot down any of this information. They don't want to hear from you. I'm just being honest with you about what it is we do. But as you can see here, this is after I'm done. I said, look, if you want to know more, fill this out. And as you can see, they checked off the, they're interested in buying, selling, or refinancing at home. Monday, anytime Monday is what they put. So that's what you know we would do. This one, they put the tax-free, which is life insurance side, which is perfect. Over here, the life insurance side, life insurance side. Here, they want to buy, sell, and life insurance side. Uh, and so, you know, he wants to be met at home because of his wife. Uh, it's, and so as you can see here, like, you know, on that side and that side here, they want to do both. And so we just jot down you know, more for contact information, if you would. And that's exactly how we do it. And so anyways, I capture everything. But if you're only licensed on the mortgage side, stick to mortgages. Now, if now we don't have too many people that are only mortgages because of the simple fact that uh, our main pool are from active realtors and brokers. But if somehow you got through and, and you are one, one of those rare people that does nothing but mortgages, partner up with the realtor. There's there's about a trillion realtors that will take your mortgage business, especially if you make them share part of their commission towards the closing costs. That's one of the things that uh, when I work for whatever reason with a realtor outside, maybe out of state, I always let them know, look, listen, I'm giving him credit for a thousand dollars. And that's something that you and I get to split, not from your pocket, but from the commission before you get it. So there's no tax implications or what have you and do that. But does that answer your question, uh, I went off on a tangent, but uh, yeah, 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 it's fine. I'll, yeah, it's fine. Out here. I was just curious about that. Uh, yeah. so my other question is this regarding the offering of the hotel vouchers, um, you know, on the on the small, they're donating 50 bucks each. You know, you're talking about Vegas, Cancun, but you're also bringing up Jerusalem. So how are you are, are you selecting a handful of prop, uh, uh, destinations only? Is the Jerusalem one only for higher end donations or different type of donations, or you just throw that in with the Vegas, Orlando, Cancun. And the answer is that I throw it all in there because I always let them know that if you go ahead and let's just say select uh, Israel, then you're, you better know that the airfare is going to be a little higher to get out there than it is to, let's just say a, a local like San Diego here. I'm, I'm in LA, as you know, uh, or San Bernardino, I'm in uh, Ontario, but it's, it's something that I make a more. So, so it has a much higher, now there's different ways to do it. One of our guys that does nothing but churches and does it very well, I, I, by far our most active one, he's not on real estate, on the real estate or mortgage side. He refers us that business and we just simply, you know, uh, pay him for that. But uh, the answer is I don't give them every selection. Technically there's not like 70 cities. I mean, you can't fit them. I always try to do something local like Vegas. So somebody says, I don't have money for the flight. Okay. Vegas is available. We also have uh, our most popular one is, is Cancun by far. So I usually say something like Sandy, uh, we, we have a uh, Vegas, we have Cancun, and we even have Israel. 
where you can actually go visit Jerusalem yourself. But keep in mind that if you do decide to go the Jerusalem route, uh, if you want to go you know, visit Jerusalem, you're, you're responsible for your airfare. And it's going to be, it's in line with where you're going, of course, and you, you don't have to worry about the resort. And it's actually not even a resort. It's a smaller like townhome with its own private pool, which is an incredible location. But uh, and all you get to pay is the actual taxes on it, which are like 20 bucks a day. And so I throw those three things out there. I don't throw too much. You'll start to confuse them. And not only that, but it will sound like uh, it's just too good to be true. And we don't want to do that. Okay. Thank you. Questions, please, before we wrap it up. Um, but, you know, Stephen, we have a couple of first time guests that are here. It's just first time. I don't want to call them out, uh, make them feel uncomfortable. But uh, uh, Stephen, I mean, you've been with us for not, not that terribly long time. But uh, can you just give us your thoughts on or, or give them your thoughts on Radiant, the opportunity, the support, uh, you know, just in case anybody's shy to ask. Uh, can, can you just literally give us a, a few words on regards to that, please? Uh, sure. Um, I had I had zero background coming into any of this. Um, and I had actually met Javier uh, just before I was going to take my exam. Um, and Javier gave me full confidence in doing that, passing that. And said, listen, when you're done, give me a call. And I did. We talked about it. He told me about Radiant Mortgage Bank, <clears throat> put me in touch with Rhett. Um, I went down and met Rhett and talked to him. And I just, uh, I really like the way they choose to do business. I like the personal touch with it. I like the fact that they are willing to look at anybody and try to figure out any angle possible to help somebody. If there's a way to do it, Rhett will figure it out. Travis can help figure it out. Um, they're available. You know, I, I find there are times when I need information, even just small things quickly and I'll reach out, you know, and, and Travis will usually get back to me pretty quick or you send Rhett a message, you get that back. Um, but they're here to support you. They're here to try to give you as much as you can to do your job. Um, along with these Saturday workshops, uh, which, you know, Javier says is focused on the marketing. So, you know, if you take these things, implement them, they will move you forward. Um, but it doesn't do itself. You know, you, you've got to put the work and effort into it. You'll, you'll get as much as you give, um, which is true of most things. And, and if you're not willing to give or push or try to spend the time, um, it's hard to expect any results from that. So it's, it's a good group of guys. I like working with them. Um, they're all very nice, very supportive, available, uh, and, and are here to help, you know, which just helps you look better in front of your client as well. Perfect. Thank you so much, Stephen. Appreciate that. And uh, uh, any questions about this from anybody before we wrap it up? I don't want you to uh, miss anything. And I hope you never take what I say the wrong way. But, you know, one of the things that I love is to surround myself with successful people at whatever it is that they are doing. Our first priority here is not mortgages, believe it or not, it's marketing. Because like I said, I know a lot of people that have an NMLS license and make no money and it's no fun. It's an expensive license. And like most other licenses out there that you, know, you could just hold for the hell of it, this one's pretty pricey between the continuing education, the NMLS and all that other stuff. Uh, you have to be in a position to monetize your license. Otherwise, in my opinion, it's just a waste of time. Uh, but I wanna make sure that again, I answer any questions anybody might have. Uh, any questions for anyone about anything at all before we wrap it up? All right. Well, if no one has anything else to add, I just want to say thank you for all that you do. Uh, and okay, I'm getting one. Okay, yeah, you can un unmute yourself. Uh, I'm getting a message. If you need to, just go to the chat mode. Uh, texting the in the chat. I mean, I'll, I'll see it eventually, but usually I see them after the webinar is over. Just unmute yourself. Hit the little microphone thing. It's it's got it says unmute, I believe, and you can unmute yourself at that point. Uh, but I, I can't tell you how proud I am of everyone that's doing their part to, you know, turn something as you know tragic as this pandemic into the, our most successful times ever. And it's just an incredible feeling to know that uh, I'm part of this. And I really thank everybody for what you do. And I challenge you to become the best version of yourself as an MLO and as a person by taking the tools we give you and actually doing something with them. Uh, last call for questions, comments, or concerns. Anyone? Once? Twice? No? All right. Well, thank you so much. And remember, so brush up on your compelling reasons as to why home ownership matters. Uh, we didn't pass that as a, as a group, considering how many people are on. Uh, but the people, every single one uh, that spoke up, they were right. They are definitely an A, but uh, everybody else, uh, you know, we, we need to work on our game, as they say, to make sure that both our results are in line with our preparation. Sometimes people expect so much just because we have an NMLS license, the world owes us a bunch of money. And that's just simply not the case. That's the first step. And that means the very first baby step into becoming what I call commission eligible, that you're legal to get paid. 
And of course, you want to make sure you leverage it to make as much as you can. And that's why I've been in mortgages, you know, for a very long time, since 2001. And I can tell you that the reason that I, you know, and I'm not bragging, I'm not saying anything at all, but the reason that, you know, I can look back and say, man, it's made us millions of dollars is because of the simple fact that we've always surrounded, surrounded ourselves with like-minded people. Uh, and you're part of that group. Uh, now, if your production is not where you want it to be, analyze it. You know, what is it that you need to change? improve upon, brush upon, or whatever the case might be, and then make it happen. And it's not reasonable to have high expectations without having high quality type of activity. And so my challenge to everybody is to do that. And remember, for those of you that are interested, let me just put this back up there. For those of you that are